Hello and welcome to this video and where I show you my top 10 chainsaw pedals in 2023. So quite some time ago, I already did a top 10 and to be honest, I haven't watched it yet. So the ranking could heavily vary, but that's mostly because I use HM2s pretty heavily and I might come to new conclusions and so on. So only rule here, just one pedal per company. So let's start. On number 10, we have the Arion Metal Master. This one is made in Japan. It's one of the many, many clones that was made in Japan. And what this pedal makes special is basically two things. We have way more lows than the original HM2, and this might be helpful for some guys. And we have a dual output. So we could basically fire up two amps at the same time. And therefore it's on the list. On number nine, we have the DoD Death Metal. Technically, this one is an MT2 clone, I think, but it does a chainsaw. And uh, what makes this special is that it does a uh, quite different chainsaw. It's, yeah, <laughs> simply different. Um, of course, this only sounds good, at least in my ears, in front of a driven amp and but with this you can get some really good complementary sounds and some really unique chains of flavor and therefore i chose the dod i did not choose the american metal and i did not choose the digitech version because i think this one is superior but the latter two are of course honorable match on number eight we have the jupiter fx death saw this one is on the list simply because of simplicity reasons. It's a non-knob chainsaw pedal. You can dial it in fully internally and then you're good to go. And I think that's really awesome when you play live and you have a well hefty stage acting. You have a singer that's running around like crazy and nobody is turning your knobs. And it does sound good. So therefore it's on the list. On number seven, we have the Pipas pedal HM Too Many Clones. And this is basically on the list because it's rather inexpensive and it has high modding capability. Tony is uh, very willing to mod the pedal to your liking. You can add a mid control, you can add a blend whatsoever. And it does sound really close and therefore it's on the list. Honorable mention from Pipas pedals, the Homongous Fuzz. It basically is a fast pedal, but it has a chainsaw EQ that you can dial in. Uh, the Humongous Fuzz that I reviewed was a loner, therefore I don't have it here, but it's for sure a great pedal as well. On number six, we have the Electric Eye Audio Swedish Steel. And this one is on the list because, of course, it does sound good. And we have basically an integrated boost pedal. Lots of you guys prefer the HM2 boosted and I do so as well. However, I prefer the boost being after the HM2, but lots of guys prefer it in front of the HM2 and the Swedish steel basically does exactly this. And so you could use this without need of another pedal. We're starting the top five with number five, the way huge Swollen Pickle Mark II S. This one was really a surprise for me because technically it's a fast pedal and I already had the Mark III, but then I found out that Will Putney actually uses the Mark II S and that it has way more controls, both externally and internally. And with this pedal, you can dial in a great fast sound, but you can also dial in a great chainsaw sound. That's really unique and good complementary, but 
of course a good standalone tone as well. On number 4, and this might be the biggest surprise here, we have the KMA Audio Dead Stack. And now you ask why the Dead Stack and why not the Wurm or the Guardian of the Wurm or the Wurm 2. And technically I have the Wurm here and this is of course an honorable mention. However, I think that I personally prefer the Dead Stack. The Dead Stack is actually no HM2. It's a fast distortion, but with the mix control you can dial in exactly the chainsaw frequency and when you boost it you get, I think, the best complementary chainsaw sound that is a chainsaw as well that there is. Sadly, Enrico doesn't make those anymore. The Chief Disruptor has replaced it. I think the Dead Stack is still far superior. Maybe there is a reissue coming, I don't know, I, I really don't know, but if Enrico is watching this, do it bro. Uh, yeah, it's on the list, it's my most favorite, but for many people the Wurm 2 should be on this list and therefore I have it here as well. On number 3 we have the Decibelix Angry Suite. This is version 2 with an integrated blend control and well, it's really simple why this one is this high on the list. It's the, the form factor, the, the only HM2 mini pedal that matters and it's the best replication of the original HM2 tone there is out there. No Wassercraft, no EHX Hellmelter, no other pedal gets this close to the original HM2 and therefore you should have one. On number 2 we have the AIB Custom FX Death Pedal. And this one is actually a surprise to me because I really love the AIB products, however I always thought that another AIB product would make this list. However, I a beat them all and the death was by far, nah, not by far, but was definitely the best. Uh, Jerome makes lots of different HM2 flavorish pedals and they are really awesome as well. He also mods pedals to do the chainsaw. For instance, his MT2 mod, his DS1 mod, his HM3 mod and I think he also did an SD1 mod, he did a Proco Red mod, uh, you know where this is going. However, I thought the Death is the best sounding pedal and I have a beat it. So trust me on this one, the Death, awesome chainsaw pedal. So before we come to number one, here are some honorable mentions that weren't quite fitting on the other ranks. For instance, we have the Electro Harmonics Metal Muff. Uh, this one is actually an MT2 clone-ish pedal as well. However, we do have with the mids fully engaged a nice chainsaw capability and this pedal is so, so flexible because you can use it as, uh, well, as a distortion pedal for the clean amp, as a preamp pedal in the FX return and as well as a boost, HM2 boost in front of the driven amp. Mm, some pedal that could also make it on the list but uh, didn't was the MXR full bore metal. It's kind of the same approach. However, I think this one is superior. We should also include the TC Electronic iMaster because it's rather easy to dial in and very, very inexpensive. For the same reasons, the Donna Giant Metal should be noticed. I actually don't like all those cheap Chinese clones, but to be honest, it kind of sounds HM2-ish, front of a driven amp, and it's very inexpensive and it has this form factor as well. However, I would always prefer the Angry Suite when we're talking strictly about form factor. And another honorable mention, and might be a surprising one because last video it was number one, 
it's the Loam of Audio Left Hand Breath Deluxe. And this is simply an honorable mention, well, you will see in a minute. Uh, it's an awesome distortion pedal, I think it's one of the best sounding ones, you have lots of tweakability options and it's a real staple pedal both live and in the studio. But... <laughs> On number one, we have this year two pedals, we have a shattered place one and if you're angry now and you want to type in a comment in the comment section, well, it's my video, those are my rules and I can do this. So on number one, we have in no particular order because both are equally good, I simply couldn't decide which one is better. We have the Long Wolf Audio Left Hand Wrath version 3 and we have the Lichtlam Audio Medusa. So. Let's talk about those two pedals for a bit. Let's start with the Left Hand Breath Deluxe. This one is currently on my live setup in Nightbearer and it's there because it's, for my taste, one of the best sounding, if not the best sounding chainsaw pedal. Joe tweaked all the options in the right setting and you basically cut through everything, sounds so so good, has basically everything I need. We have a blend control, we have a different, um, we have a three band, four band EQ actually. And what's really unique about this pedal, we have, have a voice switch that basically shifts the chains of frequency. And therefore this one made the list and not the Left Hand Breath Deluxe version 3 or the Left Hand Breath Deluxe version 2 that I showed earlier. Because I can dial in both the classic left hand breath sound and the modern shifted frequency left hand breath sound and both sounds are awesome these days i prefer the modern one because the change of frequency is shifted up and it pairs nice with my uh, other guitar player christian's hm2 sound so we can really make a wall of chainsaws the Lichtlärm Medusa is my go-to pedal when I'm in the studio because the Left Hand Rough Deluxe sits on my life rig. And this one is so full of features that it's awesome because what do you get? You get a blend, you get an FX loop where you can blend in another distortion flavor. We have a fully integrated noise gate that's by the way awesome. And we have a total of four EQs, 4 band EQ. We have additional cut that basically lets you kind of simulate a boost in front of it, kind of. We have a selectable mid frequency that we can cut or boost. And we have a modern classic switch and we even have a polarity switch. And it's so packed full of features that it's my most favorite tool to use in the studio right now. And I might also include it in my live setup in the future, I'm not sure yet. I do have to do some testing with the whole band. But yeah, and what can I say other than it's awesome and I really like both my uh, number ones. I do like the other panels as well, of course. So that was my list. And now I'm curious, what's your favorite HM2 pedal or what are your top three, top five, top 10, whatsoever? Leave a comment down below in the comment section. And if you want to support this channel, you might want to consider becoming a YouTube member uh, because there is a video where I test this pedal against its prototype. Or slash and you want to check out the links in the description. And with this being said, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, may the force be with you and have a nice day.